as the use case for this technology is becoming clearer, the need for standardizing this emerging industry was a need for greater adoption. As researchers and authorities have been working on this from some time, some nations like South Korea are set out to tax this asset class and some other countries like Russia are actually working on regulations and targeting a date by January 2021. In this scenario, commercial banks are changing their attitude towards Ripple the company as they are partnering with banks and financial institutions for mutual benefits. United Kingdom is also stepping up its role on providing appropriate regulations to protect consumers and all of these are actually happening when central banks are rolling out central bank digital currencies and we have talked about this post before right central bank digital currencies are coming out and they actually need interoperability between them as we are going in a central bank digital currency era we need to actually go in depth through these articles to understand how distributed ledger technology and ripple net or ripple protocol is portrayed by various organizations around the world in different sectors from government sectors from private sectors you know commercial aspects and different ways providing us a perspective about how strong we should be based on these fundamentals how we can actually evaluate where we are actually headed. Welcome to the Scientific Investor family where we discuss crypto and science me and investing regularly. Now this tweet from Michael actually shows how Seoul, is, you know the capital of South Korea is actually targeting a date of July 22. They will be actually showcasing how they are going to tax this new asset class. So you know there will be a bit more clarity for you know those investors who are actually entering this market and thus providing clarity will bring in more investors. Now they are actually unclear but still as the government stated last two years back they won't be actually taxing any gains till 2020 and now they are actually going to unveil something and mostly probably it will be from 2021. We will have to see how that actually works. So if that works like that, you have to understand something. When the bear market price was going down, governments were like lagging. But when we are bottoming out, governments are increasing or stepping up their efforts and going to tax the gain from 2021. So the chances are they understand that the market cycle is going to change. And eventually, those who actually hold this understanding the fundamentals will be taking out profit. So now they are set out to tax those gains. So we can actually understand that, right? Now this from uh, Wrath of Kenman actually shows like how the perspective or the viewpoints of commercial banks are actually changing. Now, previously they were kind of, you know, thinking Ripple as a competitor and they were kind of, you know, staying away from them. But if you actually read through this, you can actually see new alternatives have emerged that use cloud structures or blockchains to eliminate third parties. Ripple is well known in this market using the technology that supports the XRP token to facilitate international payments. So if someone says that XRP will never be used by banks, keep this in mind. And if you see Fudsters kind of pushing the same ideology, remember this one. So you are not, you know, swayed by some Fudsters. And then banks initially viewed Ripple as a competitor, though increasingly banks are partnering with Ripple. Why? because they both have benefits by doing so. Now, we'll actually go to documents, say all of these documents, and showcase why they are actually interested in distributed ledger technologies and kind of jumping in, because that also provides them with the ability to deliver better service for their customers, thus getting, you know, more business. This is a short report from Gao in which you can actually see analysts or uh, scientific researchers actually went through how you can actually use this technology for payments and transactions. So they actually shows how this can be actually utilized and implemented in a particular way, right? So they actually shows you the opportunities. Now, whenever they are talking about opportunities, you have to actually keep in mind, always they highlight the challenges here. And one of those challenges, the primary challenges is highlighted as energy usage. 
so whenever fudsters come in and push say ether or say btc other assets you actually have to understand yes as of now there are some you know retail outlets which are accepting bitcoin as a payment ether as a payment but when payment infrastructure is standardized governments come out with regulation say think if government is actually coming out and stating it should be green sustainable and it should not consume more than this level of energy what will they do automatically these network then would shift as just a store of value perspective for investors you know that asset class which is just traded for no reason kind of that will be there mm -hmm. so automatically you have to actually consider that and then the main issue will be the security issue now when they see or uh, talk about proof of work and say no, no 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 there is no issue like that you know you can easily understand that for example we actually saw a 51 percentage attack in these networks right so automatically that is there and for governments transparency and regulations are key whereas you know it can't be actually done in that way but automatically this infrastructure will be taking us into a new era because they are actually studying about this now so that they can actually provide a better tomorrow because otherwise you know just using these technologies we can just transfer our money to someone somewhere else and we don't need governments in between right that will be the perspective but at least for the near future governments will stay the banks will stay the central banks will stay in that aspect we can actually neglect regulation so as they come in and regulate this say for example when we move into page number 64 of this document they talk about the payment system now here when they talk about the payment system okay i'll just zoom that's better so here they talk about the payment system and they actually showcase blockchain and DLTs are actually providing those targets like in first one we told right we need simplicity we need transparency we need more efficiency in these systems but when they use these particular technology and these are actually able to provide a real time or near real time transaction with high resilience. Now, in yesterday's video, we actually went through documents showcasing and supporting that fact, right? Now, when we actually see consultation on fintech, in which majority of respondents acknowledge that DLT offers significant opportunities in transactions related to payments and security space. Now, if we actually understand fintech working with central banks, you understand directly from Bank of England, you understand directly from Bank of Thailand, Bank of Canada, you know, they actually work with a lot of central banks thus central banks being the custodians or you know the fundamental base of payments as of now at least you know for the near future we can actually see they are gonna come in and say this will be the rules and you will have to play or abide by these rules so once we are getting into that we actually can understand successful implementations of blockchain in a financial sector are related to payments where the transaction cost can be reduced substa substantially so when we say that keep in mind they are looking at one side for the transactional cost and the other side is the energy consumption so when you connect these two and look it for a big scale you actually understand that scalability comes in next so automatically if they can't take all of these in in one particular technology then it's going to be hard for them and after this you know showing all these things they kind of talk about like this some case studies on dlt applications related to, to cross-border payments given that the process for transferring money across countries is usually very slow and expensive successful implementation of this technology for cross-border payment was introduced by ripple a u.s fintech based company now back in 2018 bank of santander become the first giant institutions to actually use that you know that one pay runs on ripple thing so when we actually talk about that we also need to actually consider this space was actually dominated by swift having 11000 members right now a new system is coming in to actually provide transparency and efficiency the, by reducing the cost so now they are actually highlighting that actual settlement system is based on set of correspondent banks which use the so-called Nostro account. Now on which aspect does they talk about this? 
they are talking about this in the sense after we get these kind of technology improvement like Ripple, Swift is actually trying to improve their self. Okay, let's read their words. Swift, a consortium of more than 11,000 members, responded to this initiative by increasing the speed and efficiency of their system and testing the DLT on a broad scale in a subset of members. Now, this was the response from Swift. Now, they came up with the GPI product, which is kind of, you know, still, it's kind of, you know, painted like a new one, but inside it's still the same engine. So that doesn't, you know, count if you're really going to race with the cheetah and you are just dressing like a cheetah and inside you are like a tortoise, then there is no benefit for that. Now, in the same document, when we continue, the actual settlement system is based on the set of correspondent banks which use the so-called Nostro account, an account held by another bank which acts as a service provider and where the money are transferred. So now we actually understand that. Now, in this channel, we actually went through banking documents previously, World Bank documents showing that correspondent banking networks are reducing. Why? Because the cost associated with managing these relationships are huge and not every bank can actually afford that. Say, for example, you only have 5 to 10 customers who are sending money to a particular country. And that's not cost beneficial for you to hold those relationships. So you'll actually go instead via third party. Say, you'll go through a different bank who has this. So you'll have to pay him more. That means you'll have to charge your customer more. So when there are like MoneyGram and other institutions, automatically you're missing out on these businesses. Why? Because of this. And at the same time, you're also holding money in different regions in the name of Nostro accounts. So if Swift is to work and move ahead, as we talked in yesterday's video and showed you the proof that Swift GPI is actually working with R3 Coda for what? For this one, the settlement system, because currently they are actually using this one. And if they want to stay relevant and, you know, be the important institution which they were or are as of now, they need that settlement infrastructure because by in enabling that GPI member or GPI layer into that, they are introducing a fast messaging system, not the settlement system. But the competition here will be like whether you need a system which uses its own messaging and someone else's settlement. Or you can directly go into a technology which directly uses both together, right? A chatty protocol like Brad, how Brad puts it. So when we actually read further, we can also understand that 34 banks show effective using real-time blockchain systems specifically related to real-time reporting and update of positions, liquidity management, complete traceability of transactions and all. Now, when we actually talk about this, you also have to keep in mind, we understand there are different consortiums coming in like R3 Coda, right? And there are like Hyperledger Fabric, right? So before Swift test, the first attempt to exploit the potential application of DLT in the financial sector was conducted by R3 back in 2015 by a group of international banks. The consortium now includes more than 200 financial institutions across the world. Now, these are other networks which can actually directly use XRP, the asset. Mm -hmm. They won't be using a Ripple Net or Ripple's protocol directly. Instead, they will be using XRP Ledger, which is an open ledger, right? A open source protocol, which everyone can actually use and take the benefit of that technology. Now, when we direct our attention to the trade finance, which is kind of the main area where uh, we are headed, like there are different documents highlighting that and proving that Ripple standpoint towards this one is correct. And in yesterday's video too, we actually gave you the documents to highlight that this is the final aim and that kind of goes where. Now, a group of seven banks aimed at improving domestic and cross-border trade payments specific, spe, uh, yeah, specifically for small and medium-sized enterprises in Europe. The WeTrade Consortium connects the parties involved, banks and SMEs on a single platform. So it is kind of, you know, simple and understandable that Ripple is actually targeting something which is, you know, the reality. That is the ground reality and they, it has to be in that manner. And now when we actually come into the next document, that's Government for uh, Office for Science. And you can see it from uh, United Kingdom. So 
when we actually go into that document, say we can directly jump into page number 18 in that document and they actually talk about distributed ledgers. Mm -hmm. So this is in which aspect? This is in the aspect of payments. So whenever you see some way that you, they are highlighting blockchain in general and DLT and they talk about what is the hit, you always have to understand majority of central banks and financial institutions will be highlighting a ripple. Why? Because banks work on trust, right? Governments work on trust. Central banks rely upon trust. So they actually need that as a foundation. Now, when you actually read this, a distributed ledger requires greater trust in the validators or operators of ledger. For example, in the global financial transaction system, Ripple selects a list of validators known as unique node validators from up 200 known, unknown or partially known validators who are trusted not to collude or in defrauding the actors in a transaction. So regulating this network would be much easier because you have this kind of setup, right? So that is where, you know, they actually highlight other systems too, but the benefit of banks partnering with this, I said previously, the mutual benefit, it is this one. They can actually select the list of validators from that whole list. So that is kind of a huge thing. Now, when we come into a next report, distributed ledger technology and blockchains, here also, if we move into the page number 18, that was a coincidence, both was you know, on the same page. We can actually see establishing standards to address security and resilience of this particular technology. When we talk about DLT or blockchain, this is actually talking about again trust, right? So what is that thing which create that trust? In this regard, several interviews suggested that standardization would be needed to be to ensure and res ensure security and resilience of the network and to facilitate trust. So as we told initially, standardization is coming in. So for example, when they are implementing ISO 2022, that is kind of a standardization for the messaging framework. Now, when that standard is implemented fully, we can understand that along with the messaging, the settlements aspect would be working together. And that this would be important in determining the wider adoption of technology in the medium to long term. So if you are an investor looking at this for medium to long term, say next three to 20 years or three to five years, five to 10 years, it's up to you, right? You should be looking at clarity of how governments are actually going to look at this particular aspect. Now, whenever go in, we go in this document, we can actually see that they highlight Ripple as someone providing trust. Say, for example, they showcase here different cryptocurrencies, different platforms, including Ripple there. And they talk about that and when they come down it says in contrast ripple provides a market place for trust that should be kept in mind because the system is mainly going to be standardized and the primary factor would be trust there now when we talk about trust and in the existing system you know we use fiat currencies and all when we come into this particular document say page number 11 they actually highlights in contrast like they talk about different uh, like bitcoin and other network and come into ripple network like in contrast xrp the native currency of ripple is, is effectively a fiat currency so keep that in mind the aspect or how they understand this is like this so this is a proposal going in for uh, regulating the fintech companies. You actually have to keep this in mind, right? So automatically, if you believe this or not, this really is happening in the background. You can digest it well or you can neglect it. It's kind of, you know, completely up to you. Now in this particular item, we can actually see R3 if you look how this is connected to different networks, global trade connectivity network, you know, as you go forward financial trade network in this particular one, it actually shows you different networks and different initiatives where you can actually see number of banks working on different projects connected with R3 using Coda as a settlement platform, delivering Coda powered open industry platform to create an exchange approved value and other stuff. So you can actually see this really is happening. Now in this document, when you actually go through, you can realize that there is a lot of work being employed in this particular one you can actually see that now when we see or say that we also have to understand the 
settlement mechanism do include Zenfin or XDC, but not all the projects actually uses that, right? Only one or two limited projects actually highlight that particular settlement asset is being used for the settlement use case. Now in this particular document, not this, we have actually used it before, but I would like to just uh, represent this document to highlight that the use case is actually, all of this thing will actually emerge once we actually get that kind of tipping point. And when we say that tipping point, you know, the way they put it like here's even established technology leaders like Consensus and R3 reckon that the true value realization enabled by the blockchain technology will ensue only once all ecosystem stakeholders have made the plunge together. So automatically we are talking about the entire new financial system. Now that's again and again being ensured in different documents. So as we go further, we have to understand that will be using different blockchain technologies, the different ledgers, that's for sure. Like it never will be on one ledger. So that makes the importance of the inter ledger protocol as we just uh, showcase here. Not only the central bank digital currencies will be needing an interoperability layer, an interoperability ad asset, a bridge asset there. But it will also be for uh, the commercial institutions who are actually coming in and making their own tokens. So automatically this creates an area where there is a requirement for the trade. Say so here we can actually see that, you know, previously it was the unmet demand for just Asian Development Bank quantified the global trade finance gap estimating at 1.5 trillion of unmet demand back in 2016. Now, yes, in 2020 it will be, uh, it will not be increasing much, but you can understand by automatically recovering in economy say from next year we can actually see improvements and when we all talk about these you know the trade that percentage this percentage and all requirement this suggests that the innovative fintech solutions may resolve bureaucratic matters and which fintech is the name we are seeing on all the different documents say commercial banks uh, world bank central banks you know from imf all the supranational in organizations showing one single name differently right in different purpose in different terms but they end up with saying that name or either they actually come up and state r3 but majority of the time we actually see directly ripple say if you are reading through the document you can directly go and search ripple it will be there and if it's not there you can check for r3 and see how they are going to use that on which side they are looking at that say for example here in this first uh, case study, they are showcasing about Ripple in a case study considering the American Express and they talk about settlement, right? Settlement of that transaction. Ripple's blockchain solutions enable actors on either side of a transaction to instantan instantly settle cross-border payments with end-to-end -end tracking. So this is there, right? And then it is actually targeted to which area? To the small and medium enterprises. So. When someone actually says that, no, 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 it was actually intended for the high value payments, do understand it can be used for high value payments, but the main target from the initial age was towards the low value, high frequent payment corridors. Now, they actually show you different projects. Say the next case study was uh, of HSBC and ING. We actually went through the documents from HSBC and ING too, right? And here they actually talk about the transaction was executed on the R3 blockchain using the Coda Settler. Now, it's kind of clear. So whenever you're going through these documents, you are actually seeing that this really is happening and there are values provided by the fintech players who are coming into this space. And the traditional system is kind of competing with this one. So automatically they need some kind of token via smart contract to actually come in more. Now they show here Ethereum based on its currency and others say ERC20 tokens and different. But as we just saw, XRP can act as a fiat currency for that particular network. So if we are to see a Phoenix, you know, we can't neglect the chances that it can become the Phoenix or it will be the Phoenix. We can't actually neglect saying that one, right? Hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you saw value in the video, do support the channel, hit that like button. And if you are new here and or haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please consider subscribing by pressing that subscribe button. I'll meet you guys on the next video. Bye for now.